Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga. I'm Ali and today we're doing a class that is invigorating, strong and inspired by rose hips for our herbal series. I intend to continue the series through the month of April because it's inspiring, it's a learning opportunity and the inspiration of herbs is endless. And I also am planning on just bringing it once a month or something like this, a herbal class or an herb inspired yoga class so that we continue our learning and drawing our inspiration from nature. Really nature is the biggest inspirer. We in the future can do also astrological inspirations and stone uh, crystal inspirations, but it's an endless journey of learning, discovering and getting inspired. Nature has provided us with any, all the tools that we need to heal. And when you see plants that are emerging, new plants, they're usually geared towards the new things that humanity is facing. So stay tuned and pay attention to your environment, look around, see the plants that naturally grow and really tune in, read them. Rose hips are in the rose family and all the rose family members have five petals they uh, have affinity to the heart so when you get flower essences from any of the roses they can uplift a heavy heart people with heart condition usually also have some form of heaviness um, on an emotional level once the heart opens up the person can actually choose to heal and you know stories um, in hospitals and of patients that are dying the determining factor always is whether the person wants to live and has joy in their life or whether he's has given up. So rose is a total inspirer. It's a heart opener, it's a lifter. Uh, rose hip as a member of the family also to me is a brave one because it's a wild plant up in the mountains and it has a wild quality to it. When you when you see it growing in those uh, below those mountain peaks, it's phenomenal. It helps with detoxing the body and building immunity and strength and balancing the stomach and um, uh, removing uh, oxidants from the body as it is a strong antioxidant. It can help the bladder, the urinary tract. It's just a beautiful plant. I have the tea here with rosehip powder. Use the powder rather than extracts because the powder has pectin and all the antioxidants that are in the plant. And at the end, Prepare oil. I have rosehip oil and this is my favorite, Radha. I'll link it if it's still available below because it's my favorite rosehip oil. It's really dark, uh, it's bright red. Anyways, so bright orange. But we're gonna do some juicy face massage at the end as part of our calming down. So a long intro, we're gonna continue with this series. So get excited, get inspired, stay focused. Go through your ups and downs now with the situation in the world. You can dive down, come up and so forth. Honor your feelings and emotions and keep aspiring. Keep opening that top chakra and keep lifting up through meditation and prayer and connecting with the energies that are uplifting humanity right now. There is both things happening, so we have to focus. Remember to flow with strength and ease and let's get started. Starting at the front of the mat. Let's roll the shoulders back, rolling them backwards and feel the movement. So we're bringing movement into the body and you can close the eyes and start feeling the body, tuning into the body, becoming present in the body. The body indeed is your tool for becoming present. So we're not thinking about the future, not thinking about the past, truly feeling the moment through the body. It's a tool that if used properly can elevate the soul. Bring the breath and just feel the movement in its intricacy, fluidity, lightness. And if on the other side there is areas of stagnation and 
lack of openness feel that to try not to want to change things but rather to feel things that brings us into that emptiness of the moment the truth of the moment we're granted given this grand opportunity to be in this physical experience which is a massive experience that allows us to really really awaken the soul so this brings us into the truth of that realization just being in the body being in the moment now bring in mulabanda and transverse abdominis the deep abdominals the deep abdominal muscles the thing that holds you in contains your organs the vessel great all right inhale the hands over the head reaching and as you reach plant the hands down and feel the heart feel the heart we're working with contemplation of the rose hip plant so it is the heart energy it's really good for the cardiovascular system the flower essence is really good for the heart the spiritual the emotional heart and just by contemplating things by bringing the mind onto things you don't even have to have the remedies you tune into that vibration so you start to resonate on that frequency if you drink it, it you bring the vibration in if you think about it it's in some cases if your mind is very very powerful um, the meditative mind then it's even more powerful than the physical action exhale diving down inhale look ahead of you pull the belly in mini vacuum as you exhale plank chaturanga upward dog chaturanga downward dog and when you exhale bring in another mini vacuum Plank. bring the awareness to your heels and legs so it's not just shoulders but it's a full body pose it's not just core it's inner thighs it's heels it's ankles it's shoulders hold it smile breathe chaturanga upward dog bring your knees on the ground and we're going to do a few wave like motions here so move the spine in a fluid manner opening and then moving back and bring in the core in the moves finding the fluidity in the midsection and in the shoulders and 
degree. I took the toes under and let's go into downward facing dog one more time. <sighs> Again, a mini vacuum. Inhale the right leg up and lift the knee, open the hip. Let's walk the hands back towards the, the foot and keep lifting. Feeling the muscles involved here in lifting the leg, a lot of hip, glute. Walk it back to the front and step it behind. Wow thing, everybody's favorite pose lately. Again, heart opening, joy inducing pose. And side plank. We have to tap into that emotion, that feeling, that state of joy, especially in times when there is a little less joy in the world, we have to remember because the most damaging emotion is fear and that leads to a lot of suffering and sickness. So we have to keep tapping into that. It's accessible within us and it's our service to ourselves and humanity. Lift. <clears throat> Plank, Chaturanga, Up Dog, Chaturanga, Downward Facing Dog, a mini vacuum, let's take the left leg up and walk your hands back lift 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 lifting the knee and really engaging the hip here and walk it to the front and well thing opening through the heart Lifting through the hips. Side plank. Really lifting the body here. Feel the tone in your body. It's lifting you up. The fascia is strong. The muscles are strong. Plank. Chaturanga, upper dog, Chaturanga, downward dog. Inhale the right leg up, step into warrior one, sweeping up, lifting. And here that's a very connected to rose hip pose. It's a glorious mountainy pose. Warriors to me are always related to mountains. Those are the shift makers, the ones with idealism and physical strength that comes from the strength of the spirit. Exhale the hands behind. It's a hard pose here. Clasping and open and lifting through the heart. And we're going to shift forward and change into warrior three with the clasp. Level the hips. Try to lower here down in a standing split, but with a clasp so that we challenge the balance. 
and step it back warrior one and look up walk the hands down release plank we're going to shift the outer edges the outer edge of the right foot down inner edge of the left so shifting the heels towards the right and we're going to do knee tucks so it's a plank at the front side plank at the feet pose transitioning in the middle <laughs> half and half and we're going to do knee tucks one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine twenty one two three four five six seven eight nine thirty chaturanga upper dog really pay attention to your upper dogs today the heart down dog inhale the left leg up step it through warrior one exhale the hands behind you can change the clasp open soften into openness rather than that pushy armor like openness we want to find softness it's not a forced openness it's a gentle surrender to openness and shifting into warrior three level the hips once here and lower down into standing splits step it back warrior one release down plank feet inside plank heels to the left and let's do knee tucks so it's the other side knee tucks you're gonna really feel it in the obliques one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Plank. Press the heels. Chaturanga. Upward dog. Chaturanga, downward dog. <sighs> Inhale the right leg up. Step it through, warrior two. Another glorious pose. <laughs> Try to create a feeling of floating here rather than being very, very heavy and sinking. A feeling of floating in this pose. 
you can lean into your back body here the back muscles so we're not leaning forward not over emphasizing on tension in the front openness in the front leaning in the back body stepping into the outer and inner edge of the front foot feeling the heel or the outer edge of the back foot that is a little trickier so do whatever you can um, either focus on the heel if you have the flexibility then you can press into the outer edge of the back foot but don't worry if you can't it's okay we're here not for the perfection of the pose but for the freedom of the spirit that yoga can bring turn the palm up and walk the left hand down the leg so keep the focus keep keep the focus on why you do yoga we don't care about the smallness of things and back to warrior two clasping behind interlace the fingers open the chest one more time and this time you can lower down in side angle and reach overhead this is a very advanced pose so you can reach with one hand or both and plank chaturanga upper dog chaturanga downward dog Let's take the left leg up, stepping through, warrior two, sweeping up, finding the lightness, the floating element in the pose, <sighs> releasing resistance, surrendering to the pose. That is a step above finding the details of the pose the perfection the alignment a step above is surrendering into the pose <sighs> that step obviously builds upon first working on <laughs> alignment which we have done for years so you can always go back to all my previous classes and i work on alignment quite a bit so I'm not anti-alignment. I'm saying once we really integrate the pose into the body and the body into the pose, once it becomes a relationship with resonance, we elevate above that step of understanding. There is levels of understanding the body and yoga. Once we are in the level of, okay, now I'm ready to surrender, to let go of, every little detail of alignment which can occupy cer certain type of minds a little too much then it becomes this dance that is naturally aligned and reverse it there is alignment within your body so once we develop that body intelligence it will start guiding us warrior two interlacing behind you can reverse the clasp with the dominant finger under and open and side angle strong footwork here opening the top of the body and now the next stage is reaching and lengthening and plank a strong plank let's shift side to side right to left so over the right shoulder over the left one two 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Chaturanga, upward dog, chaturanga, plank. And here we're going to take a push up position. And we're going to do, again, working on the chest area. Push up and uh, left knee, side, side the kick, push up, opposite side, push up. Alternating. Last one. And downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up. Open the knee. Open the hip, lift the knee. Walk your hands back to standing half splits. And here one tip is to let your body hang as if it's unhinged from the hip down and the stomach lets go. And that gives you a little extra flexibility in the pose and the stomach comes closer, presses into the thigh. It doesn't have to, but that's the feeling. Great, walk your hands to the front and keep lifting that knee. You can lower onto your left forearm, lift, lift, lift. And step it through, warrior one. Stepping onto the right foot with the left knee on the floor, right behind the right ankle. And we're gonna come up a few times. So focus on the muscles in the leg, hamstring, squats, everything is working. Lift one, two, three, four, five. Lower down and here we're actually going to grab the ankle. Continue with the previous one if the ankle grab is too much and lower down and come up. So lower down and come up, <laughs> lower down. Three, four, five shrimp squats, very challenging and step it back. Warrior one. Exhale the hands behind, interlacing the fingers, open the chest. Warrior three. Here, we're going to bring the left hand down, right arm up. Revolving half moon and drop it into revolving, revolving triangle. and into left hand on the floor, side plank. Hold it. Reaching over, plank, chaturanga, up dog, chaturanga, downward facing dog. Take the left leg up, open the hip, lift the knee, walk your hands back.
again that I'm feeling of becoming unhinged so the upper body drops it just drops with no resistance again surrender which brings the chest in the belly really in towards the thigh and walk to the front warrior one clasping warrior one is the fullest representation of rose hip for me in this class it encompasses the bravery and the openness and the strength of the heart the heart is also the organ that the spiritual organ that holds joy and variety <sighs> and revolving half moon and revolving triangle and Side plank, right hand on the floor, hold it static, still, still. Plank. Drop the knees down. Let's take the right shoulder down and the right arm across. Dropping the shoulder down, the back of the head down. You can you take the left arm up and forward. And bring your left hand on the ground so you can prop up only to bring the right hand onto the inside of the right foot. Same shoulder alignment only this time you're going to open the left foot out and grab it and that will anchor you to not roll out here always everybody rolls out when i used to teach this class in my in studio sessions <laughs> it's quite normal but there is an actual very steady place here believe it or not some of you probably have found it so if you grab the two feet right hand on the inside left on the outside of the foot there is a steady place where you can stay so after you come out do a little inner thigh stretch and onto all fours opposite side surrender you can lift the right arm up you can bring it forward which really gets the upper back involved in here surrender into the floor it's beautiful how when we find physical surrender it can assist us in 
um, the concept of surrender in our surrendering in our life, surrendering to things, understanding surrender. experientially great prop yourself up with the right hand take the left hand to the inside of the left foot again drop your shoulder down and now take the right uh, foot out grab it and make sure that you're dropping kind of like in plow on the back of the shoulder that will stabilize your rear knee and stretch of the inner thigh Take the right leg up, high lunge, hands in prayer twists. Coming out, we're going to take one step with the left leg in front, grabbing the foot or grabbing the knee and twist and look behind. Step it back. Chair. Drop the left knee behind the ankle. You can bring your hands onto your hips and let's come up. One, two, three, four, five. Continue with this, or you can grab your foot and lower it down. One, two, three, four, and five, and step it back. High lunge now. And simper twist. coming out try to do one move here grabbing the knee or grabbing the foot just for the fun of the challenge of one move twisting and looking back chair Take the left leg back, high lunge, open, 
looking up. Chair. Lunge on the other side, right leg steps back open. Exhale, down plank. Twisting hips. Again, this is appropriate for apartment. No jumping, low impact, no impact. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ninety. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a hundred. Drop the knees down, sit between your heels or on your heels or on a block. Now, if you're on between the heels, you can lower down. Try to keep the knees down on the ground and not opening. So pointing forward. You can lower. coming up focus on your breath visualize you can google if you've never seen a rose hip flower the beauty the ephemeral beauty of the flower is most flowers possess that type of beauty the rose family is apples and quinces and pears and cherries and strawberries Roses, of course, medlars, it's not very common, but it's on my list of things to plant. Loquats, almonds, uh, rock rose, any flower remedy that's from the rose family will um, address the heart. And the heart when there is not enough joy, the physical heart gets damaged. So joy is not just a, a side thing, it's a necessity of life. It's a, like the air we breathe. We have to cultivate it and keep it going and sometimes it's hard. So that's when yoga and flower remedies and all those things can help. Because the access is there, but sometimes it gets severed. And right now, whether you personally have joy in your life or not, a lot of the world doesn't. It doesn't have peace and freedom and definitely doesn't have joy on a large level. So we have to personally 
cultivate that. There is a beautiful quote from my teacher, freedom doesn't exist in this universe. So whether you're alive or dead, you're still in this particular universe and the astral is very similar to this world, to the physical. And true freedom doesn't exist until we evolve past the universe, outside of it, beyond. Coming up, plank. Step the right foot in, circle. Give it a really elongated and nice connected twist. We're gonna speed it up, but I just wanna work here on the feeling of it, the alignment of it, and um, the in internal alignment of it. So give it a nice spin and switch. Give it a nice spin, coming from the core and switch. Coming from the core and switch. Coming from the core and switch. I'll start counting now. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, plank, chaturanga, upper dog, second chaturanga. Downward dog. Breathe. Smile. Feel the lightness in the body. Take the right leg up. Open the hip. Wild thing. And from wild thing. You can transition some way into wheel. And reverse it. Well thing. And both hands on the floor. Step A through warrior two. The lightness of, of being. Feeling the body. Thinking, bringing the quality of nobility into the awareness, into the physical stance. Nobility is one of the most important things we can focus on as far as the development of our spiritual body. Nobility really encompasses everything. Once we think from the standpoint of nobility, um, that is 
a step above the commandments of no lying and no stealing and all of that because we go to a whole nother expansion of awareness where those things are not a part of it And here we're going to switch into half moon. Plank, Chaturanga, Up Dog, Chaturanga, Down Dog. Take the left leg up. Well, thing. Well, thing to wheel. Reverse it. Well, thing. Warrior two. Planting the back foot evenly on the floor. Softening the shoulders, the gaze, and feeling the nobility of the pose. We become interesting in the higher, deeper, inward, and upward truth when we embody nobility. Truth becomes our guiding light and compass. And that is one of the most important things to cultivate. on a very very deep level very very deep level because a lot of what drives people to do what they do is the lack of a lot of society a lot of noise a lot of distraction a lot of diversion comes from that lack of connection of embodying of that quality of nobility or being guided by the truth. There is no two truths. That's a, the dualism of this plane. But when we talk about universal qualities, the truth is the truth. It doesn't have to be spoken. It doesn't have to be a bunch of words and novels and articles. It's something like love. You either get it or you have to work to get it. And we all are working to understand it on a deeper and on a deeper level, to really embody it, to be it, to act from a place of truth. Take a deep breath in and close your eyes and feel the pose in its nobility. Feel the pose. When we work on qualities, we're not working on the lower expression of the qualities, although that is a step towards the higher expression. That's even a concept in astrology. There is a concept of creating a noble action, and there is a concept of embodying the principle of nobility, same as loving a person and then understanding being the principle of love. Same. Same with the bodies, finding alignment, bringing the inner alignment.
and calf moon. Really bring in that upper part here of the hip muscle. Press into the inner edge of the left foot. And here we are going to step into plie. Pulses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Figure eight with the shoulders, reverse it. Circles with the fingertips, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Neck curls. Reverse it, don't force it, don't push it, stay soft here, moderate. Chin partly to the floor, look over the right shoulder, over the left, back to center, right, left. And we're going to lower one ear over the Shoulder, opposite length, again. And you can sit down and grab your oil, wash your hands. I paused to wash my hands just a second ago. And I had to step out in the rain. <laughs> so I'm coming back from the rain. And there is, I don't know if you can tell the color. That's the Rada Rose Hip Oil. It's really good for reversing sun damage. It's a very therapeutic oil. <sighs> Beautifying oil. You can place it on your face and neck. And we're going to are gliding down from in front of the ears and because this is lymphatic drainage don't press too hard if you feel certain parts a little more achy that might be lymph stagnation just keep gliding down and tap above the collarbone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. Again. In front of the ear. Split the fingers. Let's see. Sweet with one hand, but split the fingers. Suggest so I gotta work on this pinky. <laughs> split them, and we're gonna do here in front and behind the ear. You can split them also in three and one if it's easier. So that's why there is a little bit of. Um, uh, opposing information when people tell you to apply creams up that works against the lymphatic flow uh, but a lot of women 
swear by it as far as beauty goes but we really want to drain the fluid out so we don't have congestion in the face and also um, in the sinuses and ears and brain and head overall jaw teeth gums all right speaking of gums you can create a little hook with your index fingers and we're just going to bring them in the center of the chin and bring it out one bring it up along the jawline two three four five six seven eight nine ten and with the knuckle of the index we're going to bring it just under the the cheekbone one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and now from the nose out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and now pinching along the draw line pinch 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 small pinches one two and you have to have enough oil so it's it's not damaging the skin opposite side massaging the eyebrows out so again you can use your fingertips or you can use the little instrument <laughs> four five six seven eight nine ten let's bring all the fingers fingertips on the forehead and out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now we're going to bring the fingers and hold them in the base of the eyebrows just just a little under the eyebrow and the base where there is a tiny indentation and a little bit of uh, more filling there than the other parts like an acupoint finding an acupoint with more sensation to it hold it not too strong not too soft just press it and we're gonna just press it out press it out so press 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 on the inside of the eye the sinuses Let's massage in this fashion with all fingers, the back of the neck and out. Your fingers should have oil on them. So from the spine out, gliding. Tempo massage. You can use one or two fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pressing on the eyebrows and holding. You can use all fingers. Press and hold. And again, press and hold. So you're releasing the pressure and again repeating. Press and hold. And you can actually lay your head down into your fingers and close the eyes 
and again press, hold, close the eyes and lay the head down, press and hold, press and hold, press and hold, press and hold. And you can bring your hands into your palms. stretch the face so here for stretching the face creating an O with the lips so we're just going to and then you can flex those muscles along here without creating wrinkles usually good in front of the mirror but it's a good stretch for the face plus engaging the muscles mm. one <laughs> I'll count with fingers Okay, it's really good to stretch the face. We hardly ever do know what we do when we yawn, but it's really needed for the face just the way it is needed to the body, for the body. Forward fold. Pigeon. Level the hips, lengthen. Focus on your breath and you can visualize your breath as the string that connects your soul to your physical body. It's such an ephemeral string i've said it before the moment of birth in astrology and in general is when we take our first breath so the cutting of the umbilical cord is the moment of birth when we actually begin to breathe the breath is what brings the soul into the body and keeps it here it's a connection and it's it's a powerful focus to have because we're staying present in the physical while connecting with the spiritual A powerful vis visualization is to inhale pain or fear and exhale joy so you are the transformer not everybody can do that so you can be mindful and see if you're there if you can do things like this but without them bringing you down the point is to bring the world up um, using yourself as a tool so it's not always possible but inhaling the collective pain and exhaling joy we are all transformers that is the opposite visualization oftentimes we visualize inhaling light and exhaling the sludgy and the darkness which cleans us it's also powerful but here a lot of us are dealing with actually the pain in the world being bigger than ever it's always big 
but right now it's thick you can feel it it's you can cut through it so you're putting your spiritual work up to this point you're turning it around now as service and it's just a quiet service there's many ways to serve besides just a service that we do within ourselves changing sides at your pace lengthening you can lengthen the way we normally do or you can find length and working with the breath coming out one more forward fold left foot into the right Thigh forward fold. Opposite side. soles of the feet together half lotus full lotus optional you can lift And we can bring the hands, fingers pointing at us, in front of us, elbows into the belly. Lifting. Half lotus on the other side. So left foot. Grab your left leg and straighten, right leg and straighten. Soles of the feet on the floor, knees out, push forward. It's a nice ankle stretch, inner thigh stretch. Open the chest. lower down and 
knees in, forehead forward, reach forward and we're gonna scissor or bicycle the legs. Twist, knees drop to one side. Try to stack them on top of each other, opposite side. And lay down, surrendering to the moment. Creating a white, light, light orb around you, creating it with the mind. Breathing in and creating more and more radiating light. When we go deep in, we can connect to the universal soul. Breathing and just radiating more and more. Light from that orb that surrounds you. here for as long as you need to. I'll see you on Tuesday. There is the second new class of the week on my website and the rest of the classes will all be things that will bring peace and solace and lightness into our hearts. So continue seeing it with the herbal classes and the schedules and I'll see you on YouTube next Sunday next week so stay light be light exude light flow with strength and ease namaste